All right, let's try this out. Sorry I'm not here with you, but we're going to check out uh, conservation of linear momentum. It's about collisions and things like that, so uh, you'll probably be well-versed in it. Um, so at the top of your notes, throw that in there, and uh, consider this situation. We've got uh, a rolling cart right, that rolls along uh, with a certain velocity, and it hits a second cart, same mass, no velocity. Once they hit, they move away together, they stick. Um, if, you, if I was there, we would use a sonic motion detector to check this out. Uh, since I'm not, here's the uh, demo of it. You can see the cart uh, uh, hitting the other cart, and they move away. And what I want you to look at is the velocity of the two, right? Initially, the velocity here of the first cart is high. So this is high velocity. This is zero velocity. And when they hit and move away from each other, you can see that the velocity is lower than what we started with, but also higher than the, the zero of the second cart. Right? <clears throat> uh, what's happening here is that overall in this system, we're conserving momentum. We're saying this has a this system has a total momentum, and in the second part when they've collided and move away, they've conserved the momentum. The momentum, momentum is the same initially and finally. Um, so let's look at that with the uh, with the Granny and Ambrose problem. Conservation of momentum says, sa says that uh, momentum doesn't change. It stays the same as long as there's no net force, right? Momentum is conserved before and after collisions. Um, the Granny and Ambrose problem, here's Granny and she's moving, uh, she has a, a certain mass and she's moving at a certain speed and Ambrose is a kid, a smaller mass and no speed, right? And what they're saying is Granny has all of the momentum here, uh, Ambrose has none, none of the momentum, right? When they collide, you can see that they slow down. Well, Granny slows down and Amber speeds up, and so I assume that they'll have a lower speed than Granny's initial speed, but a higher speed than Ambrose's speed because their mass uh, has sort of increased, right? So let's uh, do a little calculation. You can pause me and uh, try to figure these out on your own, but find me Granny's momentum, find me Ambrose's momentum, find me the total momentum, yeah, and uh, and then we're going to. Um, Talk about that value being conserved. Cool. Um, so, Granny's momentum, of course, is 240 kilogram meter kilogram meters per second, and Ambrose is none kilogram meters per second. And so, if you add them all up, you get the 240. All Granny has all the momentum, and Ambrose is just sitting there like a bump on a log, so he has none. Right. Um, so after the collision, Granny's speed. Uh, well, let's see. I, I, I'm I'm not sure, but I know that the momentum of the system here is the same as the momentum of the system here. So we could say that momentum of Granny plus uh, momentum of Ambrose should equal the momentum of both um, when they're together, right? So this is mass of granny times velocity of granny, if we want to be technical, plus the mass of Ambrose times velocity of Ambrose should equal the mass of grandma granny plus the mass of Ambrose. That's their combined mass. Uh, times their combined velocity. I'm going to call it V2, right? And so we know that this is all zero because the velocity here was zero. Um, and we know this is 80 times 30, so this is 240. Right? And all of these together is, what, 120? <clears throat> And so the velocity 2, if you solve for v2, you should get v2. Their, their secondary velocity is 2 meters per second. Right. 
And that just kind of makes sense, right? Granny's speed decreases. Ambrose's speed increases. Uh, the total mass of Granny and Ambrose is the sum of its mg and ma, so it's 120. Um, and their momentum should be the same as at the end, 240. Oh, this is one of your pet pages in your in your notebook. Um, so the final velocity is this two meters per second, right? Granny's speed decreases, Ambrose's speed increases. Fine. That's kind of the 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 idea of all of these. Um, so if we were doing the same sort of thing, here's Steve standing there. Here's Frank colliding with him. Frank's originally running at eight meters per second. Uh, how fast are they both going after they collide and move off as a single unit? Well, you'd say you'd say momentum of Frank plus the momentum of Steve should equal the momentum of them both or the total, right? And we know that Steve's got no momentum because he has no velocity. So this is all mass of Frank times velocity of Frank plus mass of Steve times velocity of Steve. Oops. Steve plus velocity of Steve should equal to the mass of them both, Steve plus mass of Frank times the velocity. I'm going to call it V2. And this is just zero because the Steve's velocity is zero. So you'd say what eight, 80 times eight should be what they're both 80 kilograms, right? Yeah. So 160 times V2. Um, you could multiply and divide, but if you look at this, we're we're doubling the mass. So it, seems to me like velocity should be halved, halved. So V2, just verify, so 160, uh, so 80 times eight over 160, yeah, it's four, sweet, meters per second. So Frank's got all the momentum, but then he's doubling his mass, so his velocity should have, cool. All right. <clears throat> um, great. So inelastic collisions is when uh, objects stick together after the collision. There's no bounce. I remember this because like elastic sounds bouncy to me and there's no bounce. They just stick. So like a, a, a bullet hitting a piece of wood and sticking in it or um, like a clay ball smashing into something and sticking. Right. Um, one of the big things is Kinetic energy is not totally conserved. You hear it, it heats things up a little bit, um, and so energy is lost. But momentum is always conserved. Uh, and also collisions generally aren't perfectly inelastic or perfectly elastic. They never, there's never a perfect bounce or a perfect stick. It's usually a little bit of both. But just to make it easier to visualize, we talk about those two. So write that down. All right. So we're going to talk about the... Um, inelastic collisions where we stick and want to look at momentum so this is this is the same problem granny and Ambrose problem um, but with the carts right you roll one with some mass some velocity hit something with same mass but no velocity and they move away together um, you should notice that the velocity is decreased and since we're doubling the mass we should half the uh, velocity to maintain the momentum. So let's try that with some real carts so you can see it happening. Um, so we got the uh, same mass uh, a velocity on one. It has all the momentum and when it hits the other one the uh, the velocity decreases because the momentum is sort of shared by the two. Alright, the same sort of thing happens when your velocities are in opposite directions but the same, the same um, magnitude right and you'll notice like if you rolled both of these I don't have a video for this one but if you rolled both of these to each other and they have the same velocity and the same mass they should just stop each other right because theoretically like this had this has a momentum 
which is mass one times velocity one. Um, and this velocity is going in the positive direction, so it's m1 plus or m1 times v1. This is the same thing, but this momentum two is m1 times, uh, sorry, m2 times v2. But v2 is going to be the exact same, but negative m2 v2 is negative, sorry. So it's saying m2, which is the same thing as negative v1. And essentially, the momentum of the whole system, right, if you look at the, the entire system, the total, is momentum 2 plus momentum 1. This one is m1 v1. And this is m2 and m1 are the same, right? So this is m1 negative v1. Uh, so essentially, the total momentum here is zero. And you can see this if you do this the other way. If you, if you first put them together, and I do have a video of this guy, right? You put these together, and then you right, and then you spring them apart, right? Right here, they're not moving, so velocity is zero. So momentum is zero, and then when you spring them apart. Actually, they'll go this way, right? You spring them apart, and they recoil from each other. And they should, if they have the same mass, recoil at the same speeds, but in opposite directions, right? The velocities have to be in opposite directions, so it maintains this idea that the total momentum is conserved. There's still zero momentum, net momentum here, just like there was at the beginning before the spring popped, right? Um, and you can see that with... Um, heavier pieces, like if we do the same sort of thing, you could talk about this uh, heavy mass um, hitting the, the lighter mass, and of course this one, if if the heavier mass, if the velocities are, are the same and the mass is heavier, the heavier mass will drive this one backwards um, because the momentum sums is positive and so it sort of shoves it backwards. This also works with the uh, the zero initial momentum, right? If we spring this, if this is, let's call this, let's call this uh, M2, let's call M1, let's call this two times the mass two, right? So saying this is double this one. Um, and I've added weight in this scenario to, to show that, to reflect that. If you set them up and spring them, this one has twice the mass as this one. And so the momentum's got to be conserved, right? So this momentum two should be equal to momentum one, but backwards, right? And so if this is two m v, this is m, it's got to be two v for it to balance out. And so what that means is this thing should go faster, and when we when we try it, it does, right? All right. So same sort of thing. This is uh, this scenario. Um, so Steve and Frank back. Oh, Frank's lost some weight for some reason. So he Steve's running to the right. So that should be Steve, and he's eighty kg. And he's running at two meters per second. And here's Frank, and he's running to the other way at one meter per second, and he's lighter than normal, wearing small smaller shoes. So you'd say the momentum total at the beginning is equal to the momentum at the end. It's conserved, um, but let's figure out their total momentum. So let's go momenta. So momentum of Steve initially is mass times velocity is 80 times 2 is 160 kilogram meter per second. And Frank is the same idea, but he's lighter. And also he's going the opposite way. So the velocity will be negative, right? So 70 kilogram meters per second. Oh, and negative. So there are their two momenta, 
right? Um, one, sorry. Yeah, jogging to the left. Okay. Um, so who wins and how, by how much? Well, obviously, he's a bigger guy. Steve's a bigger guy moving faster, so he has more momentum. So when they collide, right now, they're, they're the sum of the momenta is 160 plus negative 70. So the sum is 90 kilogram meters per second, um, which is that way, right? And so at the end, it's going to be the, the momentum is going to stay the same. So momentum is going to be mass of both times the velocity. So this is going to be uh, mass 1 plus mass 2 times velocity. We know it's got to stay at 90 because our momentum is conserved. So 90 should equal both their masses. So 80 and 70. So 150. Uh, oh, sorry, 70. This 70 times the new V. Right? So 0 0.6 meters per second when you divide. And, and it's positive which means they're both going this way. Now, they're not moving that fast to begin with, 2 meters per second, 1 meter per second. So 0 0.6 meters per second in that direction makes sense because Steve's going to drive Frank backwards. Neat. Um, all right. <clears throat> Same sort of thing with the, the cannonball, right? This has uh, the sum of the, the momentum here is 0. So the sum of these momenta has to be 0, too. So zero has to equal the momentum oh, momentum of the cannon and the momentum of the cannonball. Um, we know this is fired at 30 meters per second out, so this V is 30 meters per second. Um, and the cannon has a mass of 100 kilos, and the ball has a mass of 10 kilos. So we can say, all right, well, momentum of the cannon plus the momentum of the ball should sum to zero. So this is 100 times the velocity uh, plus 30 times 10 equals zero. Right? And you can solve for velocity there, right? Oh, sorry, that's times. So th 300, negative 3. Negative, so this becomes 300 here. You subtract and you get 100 V. And so V ends up being negative 3 meters per second, which makes sense. It's negative, so it's going in the opposite direction of the cannonball. And it's quite a bit smaller veloc velocity because this is much bigger. In fact, this is 10 times as big, so this velocity should be a tenth as much. Neat. Try that out with a handful of these problems in your home learning. Uh, answers are there. They're probably right. Check them out, and I'll see you later. Bye.